Welcome back to Fast Monty's Garage. Today we're going to talk about a bolt-in chassis stiffening system from UMI Performance. If you're wondering why did I just emphasize bolt-in, well I recently completed a playlist over there if you missed it of a weld-in chassis stiffening system for my A body. They exist for several platforms mostly body on frame applications like from GM back in the day and uh, that process was painful it was uh it took a long time but it came out beautifully check this out there's a rear frame brace uh, new side rails and boxed in the existing side rails with a new transmission brace in the middle and the car is completely different now because it is stiffer and i can uh it's hard to explain but it feels planted so my car set up for autocross and track but i noticed there was some twisting in the body when I did a drag racing event. If you want to see that and make fun of me, go for it. Now, moving forward, how did and why did I find UMI Performance? Well, I did some Googling and I found they made a front support and a rear support and they're tubular. Now, the reason I emphasize tubular is on my model. Yeah, pretty close to my car. That kind of mimics what we installed, right? So parallel rails, new um, cross brace in the front and rear. When I installed the existing uh, new cross brace and side rails, I had them in th welded in three pieces. I can move the rails like um, ski poles. That was a little worrying because that means there is no torsional support in the in the back. Because if I can move the poles that easily, then what, what good are they doing for this torsion? So that's why I like the UMI performance upgrade so this is tubular so this actually mounts on the front and looks pretty easy and if you don't know my channel i do all this stuff at home uh, and it gives you a good idea if you can pull it off at home too so i think this can be mounted on your car without lifting the car up on the front so we're going to give that a shot today but what i like it's tubular so the point with tubular is you can't twist it that's the whole point so i'm looking forward to that that'll give the front end uh, some stiffness from torsion because I don't want I don't want the rails moving. So I, I mean, obviously I can't move it, but you want to keep that front end stiff as possible to make sure your suspension does the work, not your frame. Now the same thing goes for the rear. The rear was a little bit uh, thicker tube, and that will also help with that support. Now before we get started, if, if you haven't subscribed, do so. And if I've ever helped you out in the past or in this video, consider getting a hat. There's several different colors, there's a link below, but I would like to get a benchmark, what's going on here. Now, uh, I'm an engineer as, a back, as my background, and I think the most logical thing to do is get the car off the lift. I did this with the other chassis uh, system, is uh, jack up the front left part of the car, because it's gonna want, as any of you guys have jacked up the side of your car, knows the, you know the car twists, right? So the front left I'll jack up um, to a certain point, and then I will take a measurement on the frame in the rear, put all this system on, and then we'll do the same measurement again, just to see if it worked. I have no idea if it's gonna work, guys. I've not, I've not done this before. But all I know is if we can buy a bolt-in system to stiffen up our chassis, why not? Because we're not welding, we're not painting, we're not cutting, we're not grinding, like I did in the other videos. So here we go. Let's go get the car off the lift. And then after that, we'll start bolting these things on. Oh, this is like deja vu, because <laughs> we did this last time with the weld-in uh, frame system. So um, I got another feel feeler gauge. Yeah, it's calibrated, so don't pop off. But I got it, so I have the tire. I can barely squeeze the feeler gauge through. All the tires are at 33 PSI. So now, let's go measure the mark I put on the back of the frame and that'll be our jump off point. And hopefully that changes with our new uh, bolt-in system. So let's go measure that. Right. The top of the line, right at the vertical line is eight inches. All right, let's get this back on the lift. All right, the front end of the car is not jacked up. It's sitting on ramps, just so I can easily film it for you guys. But this is pretty neat. So here's the passenger side has a slot. And then the driver's side also has a slot, but it's 90 degrees from the other slot. 
Now what we're going to do, and it's pretty straightforward, is we're going to fully remove the front bolts on our sway bar bushings. And then we're going to fully, then we're going to loosen the back bolt. We're going to slide in the driver's side, and then we can slide in the uh, passenger side and put the bolts back in. That seems pretty easy enough. Let's give it a shot. Okay, like I said, driver's side first, and this is totally loose, see? You can move it, it still has the back bolt on there. And we're just gonna take uh, the new brace, and we're gonna slide it in there. Bam! Nice. Let's go to the other side. And here's the passenger side. Slide right in. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these bolts a little bit so we can get the front bolts in. Oh yeah, there we go. That was actually really easy. So what I did was, uh, to give you some guidance, put some force on the sway bar while it's loose so it pushes the brackets back a little bit so you can get those bolts back in. And then uh, line it up because the passenger side will can move because it's slotted. So I use the two knuckle, two finger rule on the sway bar and it's awesome. So. I wouldn't uh, put a ton of torque on these fasteners. You always have to keep in mind, it's just the thickness of the frame that's holding those in. So 20 foot pounds, probably where you want to be, but it looks killer. I love it. Um, the other uh, thing you need to be aware of, if you do have to jack up your car and you get the suspension unloaded, do not tighten these until the suspension is fully loaded. That's the number one rule of sway bars. You want to tighten all your fittings when your car is on the ground. So uh, let's keep that in mind. Let's move to the rear. Here we are at the back. You absolutely have to get the rear end off the ground and support the axle. I'll show you why in a second, but I want to show off this beautiful piece of engineering. <laughs> so this is the rear. The tube is bigger than the front. The driver's side has slotted holes and the other side does not. Now, the dead giveaway of fantastic engineering on aftermarket parts, in my opinion, is when someone slots one side because the tolerance used back in the day varies so much from car to car. Doesn't matter if it's the same year, they can be off by a half inch. And that's why there's a nice slot here to, to give us some room to play with, which is fantastic. Now, the issue is, is trying to get this in there. So let me show you up close. All right, I managed to get my camera up in here, which was a pain in the ass, but I have a different scenario than most of you. My uh, struts go right up through my spring perch right here, because they're coilovers. That's very unique to my car, and I'd say 2% of you have that kind of setup. Uh, most of you have your rear shock is mounted on these two holes in the back. Uh, this is the driver's side, by the way, sorry, that's front. So your strut is mounted right here and you have to take those screws out. Now make sure you have the axle supported because when you jack up your car and the wheels are off the ground, your strut is actually holding your uh, axle. So if you take these screws out, the axle is gonna come falling down. So make sure you support that axle. Take those screws out on both sides and now we have to figure out how to get the support up there and I'm a little worried because my exhaust is tucked up here too but we're gonna find out real quick here I'll keep the camera rolling maybe even get in a different position so you guys can laugh at me easy way to think about this the sticker points towards the rear on the front the sticker ports tw points towards the front so here we go Oh man, so close. I don't know if you guys can see that, but um, that was the first attempt. Pivot, pivot. Oh, there we go. Almost. Almost there. Yes, I think we're there. That was not as scary as I thought it was gonna be. I just had to figure it out, but it doesn't look like 
Now I got like less than a quarter inch from the exhaust to that um, that bar. So let's go. I'll put the camera back where it was. And put those bolts in. Okay, I might have got ahead of myself. I said that engineering is spectacular. Blah 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 blah. Well, the kit comes with these three eighths inch um, grade eight bolts, which are always nice to have. But the holes are smaller than three eighths. Yeah, good one, right? So. Uh, if I can get a drill bit in there, I will open up those holes. If I can't, I'm going to have to reduce the size of the fastener, which I don't want to do. I want the biggest fastener possible holding that load. Oh my God, of course this happens. So let me go dig up some tools. Got some tools. Drill with an extension on it. I use this extension actually to cut holes and studs behind drywall. And it's really handy because it's flexible and you can get additional lengths and you can go like 12 feet. So I used this already in the house. Um, I have used this before on the car too. Uh, the trick is you have to get those drill bits that have the shank on the end like that. So it locks into place. This should give me enough room to drill those holes out. Unfortunately, uh, this bit is a 3 8 inch bit. I would prefer like a 7 16th or something a little bigger to give us some clearance, but that's all I got to work with. So uh, there you go. I know there's other things on the market that can hold the standard drill bit. I just don't have that tool. So here we go. You can make fun of me all you want. Let's do this. Hey, that was easy. See if the bolt fits. Ah, uh, yeah. Three more to go. All right, bolts are in. I added washers just because uh, I'm a, wash a washer snob, but um, it worked great. Everything clears. And like I said, I have like a less than a quarter inch of clearance from my exhaust. But be patient because this the back bolt on the aft, the aft side on both sides, you have to do the whole one finger trick with getting that washer and the nut on there. Be patient, but uh, you can get it on there and then tighten those to 25 foot pounds and uh, we're good. So I got to get this off the lift, probably go around the block a few times, get the um, suspension to settle and then we can uh, test our reading on that back part of the frame. Feel the gauge. Goes right under the tire, just like the first time. Let's go measure that mark. All right, see how we did. I can't remember if we measured to the bottom of the line or the top, but uh, that's the measurement. Eight and an eighth of the top of the line, and an eight and a sixteenth of the bottom. So let me go check the footage and wrap this up. Eight inches to the top of the line. I just double checked the footage. So that means we gained an eighth of an inch of stiffness. I can't wait to tell my wife. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm, again, I don't, I don't even know if that's the right measurement to use to measure torsional stiffness of a car and frame. Like, come on, give me a break. Like the before and after, I, I, I don't know, but it, it was an improvement, right? So um, if you have a better idea, you let me know. Now, next episode, you got it is it's gonna blow your mind, literally, because we're gonna be testing CFMs of electric fans for your cooling system. Because those of you that follow the channel know that I'm obsessed with finding the most efficient cooling for my engine. So this topic will apply to everyone with an electric fan. I'll show you how to measure CFM. And what, most importantly, we'll determine what manufacturers are lying to us. So stay tuned, subscribe if you haven't. And until next time, building fast, driving faster. See ya.